old tyres. I believe it would have been nice then. And yeah, there's a, there's a definite judder as you initially come onto the brakes. Yeah, it's quick. After much delay, I'm finally got a dry day. Doesn't seem to be any salt on the road. The sun is even shining. So it's time for me to finally do the first ride on the GSXR. Now I've had this bike for probably a month, maybe even six weeks. I've not even ridden it yet until today. So join me on the first ride of this machine. This is a 2008 GSXR 1000 K8. Um, join me for a ride. It's got 14,000 miles. You know, how does it compare to the latest and greatest modern bikes I've been riding for the last two or three years? I've joined the Gixxer Club, so it's time to take the bike out, see how she is, and see if I've made a mistake with this purchase. <laughs> Chopsy, roll the intro. So there she is, the mighty K8 GSXR. You know, one of the sort of first GSXRs, I suppose, to have you know all of the bit of Euro emission stuff on it. So this does have a cat on it. You know, it does have some of the the Euro emissions and stuff, but not like Euro 5. You know, nothing like that. I think it was Euro 3 when this came out. The bike's pretty clean. I've been a little bit, tiny bit disappointed because when I first had this delivered it looked brand spanking new. There must have been some sort of coating on it because now I'm starting to see the odd little mark on the bike. Like even on the fairing here, I don't know if you can see, there's little marks on the fairing which have been painted. So there's little marks here, there's little marks here as well, which have been painted in. There's a little mark I can see on the top of the casing here, which has been painted in. It's come off a little bit where it's been painted. So it is very good condition, but it's not as pristine as I initially thought. And uh, it's a little bit annoying. You buy a bike and then the, the, the fancy coating which the dealers put on it is worn off and you can see the, the slight marks on it. But in another way, I'm quite pleased because it means I can use this bike for what I initially wanted it for. You know, it's not a pristine museum piece. It is a used machine. So I feel a little bit better about myself for taking it on track and stuff. But you know, it's one of those things, the money I paid for it, I still paid good price. I haven't been ripped off. You know, I'm not going to complain to the dealer, but just a tight, some little marks have started to appear as that coating's worn off. I don't know, some sort of silicon spray or something, but the little marks are starting to come through, but it's still very good condition. Anyway, let's jump on. I'm not moaning already. I've not even ridden it yet. Well, I've ridden it here, but that's not very far. It's about far from me out. So let's jump on. I'm quite excited about this. Having a bike for six weeks or so and not riding it has been killing me. <laughs> it's been killing me. But I didn't want to take it out and it was all really salty. You get that salt on your bike and it does basically ruin it. I don't care how much you wash it. You know, that salt gets into all the fasteners and um, you know, damages the bike. So I didn't want to do that. So I, I've held off. Was it worth the wait? First of all, powering it up, you've got to pull the clutch. We're in sort of sitting on it it feels actually feels quite small it doesn't feel massive i mean just for a bit of a bit of information for those who may be new to the channel i had a bmw s1000 double r from bmw last year for the season to ride a press bike yeah i'm very lucky i did track days on that you know and that was a 20 20 000 pound motorcycle just over actually with the extras it had you know so that's what i'm used to how is this 14 year old GSXR going to compare to that, you know, brand new bike. I've got to take it a little bit easy to, to warm it up. I've come sort of five minutes from my house, but she's by no means fully warm. Sitting on it, the seat is quite slippery. It's probably that bloody silicon the bike's had on it. It's got a slippery seat. I may have to try and clean that off. The bars feel a nice height actually. Certainly, I think a little bit higher than what they are on the S1000RR. Compared to the S1000RR, 
it's a similar position I have to say I'm sort of you know back's quite straight I'm not leant forward too much the pegs feel a similar height what is great on this is that you can actually adjust the uh, the rear sets they've got two positions up and down and this is in the highest position and it still feels pretty comfortable like I say I'm 6'2 I don't feel too cramped I think it's definitely more comfortable than a lot of modern sports bikes definitely more comfortable than like Panagales etc etc slightly more comfortable even than the s 1000 double I would say so compared to modern bikes very very comfortable machine Chain the brakes the guy told me it has had new pads in it and what I have noticed actually just riding to the uh, the pub there when I started the video it's got a little bit of judder on the brakes I don't know if the brake disc could be a little bit warped but as I brake Certainly at slower speed. Hmm, that's in quite so bad there. It's had new pads, but that shouldn't cause juddering, should it? Unless they're not seated properly. Let's keep an eye on that. Let's try again. Yeah, there's some, there's some definite judder as you initially come onto the brakes. Yeah, definitely juddering front end there. So it could be a warped disc. So that's the first thing. I need to look a bit closer at that. There's also a very slight knocking coming from either the forks or the headstock <laughs> so I've got to have a look at that as well mid-range oh she's got she's got a nice bit of mid-range this bike has the optional arrow end cans and I've actually taken the baffles out and it's still not too loud you know it's nice and quiet I've actually managed to buy myself the link pipe so I can because a lot of people have said from that initial sort of introduction video that the uh, this this model which was the first one I think to have the cat it does sap a bit of the mid-range power from the bike so I've actually managed to get myself the arrow link piece so I can take the cat out so it's something I may do I didn't want to commit to doing anything until I'd ridden it to see you know what it was like completely standard and it's a little bit weak in the middle certainly compared to I'd say the s 1000 double R but that does have the, you know, the variable valve timing and the shift cam so it's gonna be in there but removing that cat would probably help there but I'd probably then have to get a power commander etc as well it's something to think about but while the link piece came up I thought I'll buy it because how often is that genuine arrow link pipe going to come up so I bought that on eBay so I do have that ready to go on if I want it Ooh, yeah it's a little bit flat compared to uh, the S1000 I've got to be really careful as well actually because checking the bike over the other day I realised that the tyres are 10 years old because this bike's only done like a thousand miles a year um, and it hasn't done that much over the last few years the tyres even though they've got loads of tread on them are 10 years old and uh, I don't fancy riding hard on 10 year old tyres because rubber goes off so I've got some Dunlop Sport Smart TTs to go on so until they go on, I'm going to take a little bit easy because of course this bike has no traction control, no ABS, this is completely analogue and it's a bit cold. So <laughs> we're not going crazy today on 10 year old rubber. No quick shifter and blipper of course, we're all manual here, we're all analogue here. There's none of that nonsense, we're all, you know, that's your traction control. <laughs> But I don't know, the reason I wanted this was I wanted to I wanted a, a bike to use on track for the season, you know. I didn't want to spend huge sums of money. And you know, th th these 2000 bikes for me is where things really started to progress the technology, you know. And they're not, the late 2000 bikes are really not that far removed from the latest kit. I think the only thing they're missing really is obviously the electronics. Apart from that, they're not massively different, if I'm honest. And this bike, I think, only weighs 172 kilos dry. So it's also lighter than the latest modern kit as well. So, and that's with that little cat. Once I get that cat out of there, it's probably going to be even lighter than the modern bike. So there's a lot to be said. These, these bikes are not write-offs. I had a lot of people say in the comments, Retro, mate, you're having a laugh. That's what my current bike is, you cheeky sod. <laughs> the words to that effect. You know, I do apologise. I'm not saying, you know, you're, this isn't really a retro bike. It's, uh, a, it's, it's not a... I got criticised for calling it classic. I got criticised for calling it retro. What would you call it? 
if it's not retro or classic, how would you describe it? Yeah, it's got a bit of punch there. Right, let's take a little bit easy around here. Juddery brakes and old tyres and dirty roads and no traction control are not <laughs> great combinations. But it feels, uh, it feels very, very nice. Once you're moving at a decent speed, it's agile. It certainly, it feels maybe a little bit more weighty to change direction than the double R. But that, of course, had carbon fibre wheels, which make a huge amount of difference to sort of direction changes and stuff. So even though, you know, this is a light bike, lighter than the S7 double R, without the carbon wheels, it's not going to change direction quite as quite as nicely, but still absolutely fine. I am nitpicking. The gearbox is delightful. The clutch is lovely. Asha, oh, sure. oh GS man. The clutch is very nice. Gearbox is lovely. Suzuki's always like that. You know, the new ones are same. So easy to find neutral. Lovely clutch action. That's a little bit flat in the mid-range compared to the double R, certainly. But I, I will get some of that mid-range back if I uh, swap that link pipe out. So I think I will do that because you do have to work it a little bit in the mid-range, I think, to get the most out of it. You know, all running the lower gear everywhere, but I like the mid-range in the higher gear, really. I like to ride like that. Gas, 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 gas. Top gear gas. Yeah, a little bit of winding up needed. Suspension feels nice, actually. Quite firm. It's actually quite a firm feel. A lot of people have said the rear shocks on these are terrible. <laughs> so... I potentially may uh, change the rear shock to perhaps a Nitron or something. I may even do the fork cartridges as well. We'll see. I mean, I don't know when the suspension was ever, has been refreshed at any point. It's certainly going to need probably a, a refresh, but it may not be worthwhile bothering the refresh on the rear. Maybe just change the rear shock. But the forks, I, I may need to get refreshed at some point. Or cartridges. <laughs> We're all getting a bit serious already. Quick shifter and blipper, I am missing that a little bit. Certainly for this sort of bike, because it's, you know, they cry out, they're crying out for a quick shifter and blipper on a sports bike. So, you, you know, you've got to use a clutch, you've got to, you've got to do all that business, but, you know, it's all good fun, isn't it? And then when you're really screaming, the quick shifter makes the gear changes so much quicker. So, I may look again at quick shifter as well. <laughs> but direction changes. Front's very lively! Oh yeah! Yep, it's quick. There's nothing wrong with the performance. That was just tickling to the 8 and 9 grand mark there. And it was the front was coming up. It's got bags of power. I think these are 175 horsepower at the crank. So you're probably 150 at the wheel, at the rear wheel. Ish, you know. If I'll move that link pipe, get a map on, get a power commander on or something, and maybe have it mapped. I think you can probably get a little bit more, but that's plenty of power there. It's, for the road, you don't need any more than that. You really don't. And it's pretty usable power. Oh, there's that brake jetter again. Whoa! Yeah, direction changes are nice. It's a case of dialing into the bike, you know. Getting off the double R, it feels a little bit slower at high speed, but that's just relative, isn't it? Because I'm used to that, it's absolutely fine. Woohoo! I can feel a little bit of vibes through the foot pegs. There's a little bit of vibration coming through from the engine. That's a can of beer. The bars are a little bit of vibration, but I'd say slightly better through the bars than the S1000 double R was because you know they you know the BMW force and just can't vibrate but there's a bit of buzz there probably very similar actually to the new GSXR I'd say it's pretty similar amount of vibration buzziness to the new GSXR it's perfectly acceptable but there is a little bit there right, let's give it a little bit of beans 
little bit of bainage, a little bit of bainage. <laughs> oh yeah, it's quick. It's quick, front wheel lifts up, top end of first gear. I don't know if you can get uh, you know quick action throttle because you wind it on, but there's you've got to readjust your hand position to get the last bit of throttle. I think I want a quick th turn throttle, you know, so you're getting 100% of the throttle movement with a, a single twist of your wrist without having to take your wrist off and reposition your hand. So perhaps a quick, quick turn throttle, quick action throttle, <laughs> some new brake discs or something up front to stop that juddering. And uh, I think I will be set for some track days. Possibly I could change the gearing as well. I mean, there's another way to give your bike more grunt, more mid-range grunt, and that's to adjust the gearing. So perhaps a tooth bigger, a tooth smaller at the front? A tooth bigger at the front, no, a tooth smaller at the front. Yeah, it's a tooth smaller at the front, isn't it? Would wake it up a little bit more in the mid-range because it is a little bit, um, a little bit flat, I'd say, compared to like the latest, S1000 RR anyway, and probably the latest GSXR as well because that's got the VVT, isn't it? So it's a little bit flat in the middle, but not too bad. I think a, a drop of the front tooth would sort that. Yeah, direction changes are pretty good. I mean, it's a lightweight bike. It is a lightweight bike. The flipper would have been nice then. Oh, it's a bit mucky here, this road. A little bit careful with my shitty tyres. Flipper, flipper would be nice there. <laughs> Spoiled with that stuff, aren't I? But the actual bike, the ride, you're a little bit more on it, I'd say, than the, the latest stuff. Rather than being it, feeling like you're in it, you're a little bit more on it. Which I don't know really whether that's a good or bad thing. But it's very comfortable. Can't wait to get those Dunlops on and be able to throw it around because I can tell it's going to really handle. It changes direction really nice. But I think with the, if I fit my link pipe, get a power commander on, I think it'll just crispen up that mid-range a little bit more. So perhaps the link pipe, the power commander, and uh, maybe a tooth down at the front and a quick action throttle it would be an absolute weapon yeah it's nice it is nice i'm i'm happy i'm a happy bunny actually it's given me everything i wanted from an older bike it's fast enough it handles yeah there's some little tiny little things to to look at if i want to get it absolutely perfect but I think that, you know, with some wise, some, spending some money wisely on this bike would bring it very, very, very close to, I think, the latest kit. Judder, judder, judder. It's that sort of initial pressure look. Judder, judder, judder. You can see, you can see the, the fork bottoms juddering as well. So I think it's definitely coming from the, from the discs. Okay, let's have a, let's have a picky. But there she is, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that, actually. I'm quite happy with how that is performing, apart from, you can see there, there's a little bit of a mark on the disc. I know the pads are new, so you've got to bear that in mind, haven't you? But there's something going on with the, with the pads. Tyres are not very warm. My old tyres are perhaps not warming up as quickly as I'd like. So I've got to be really careful on these, these old, my old Michelins. They even feel hard, you know. Ugh. Get those Dunlops on. But I'm happy with that. I'm happy it does everything I want it to do. I love the look of it as well. I love the look of bikes from this era as well. It's when bikes were rounded. You know, you had curves. You know, you, you just, they're much more angular. I'd say the bikes these days. I guess this is a little bit angular in places, but it's more curvy. It's more voluptuous. Look at the back end, you know, there's a bit of girth here. It's, it's voluptuous. I like that word. Bumblebee, it must be spring. 
You're a little bit early, mate. So there we go, first ride of the GSXR. I'm going to be doing a whole series of older bikes <laughs> afternoon. And I mentioned this before, and I've had massive feedback from people. So everyone who's replied and said you can borrow my bike, it's unbelievable. And I've even managed to find a very kind gentleman who's going to let me ride my dream bike. He's got an RG500 and an RD500, both in pristine condition. But he's in Cornwall, but it's where I'm going to drive down to Cornwall, or ride down to Cornwall, and take my dream bikes out for a ride. So that's not going to happen until the spring, until he's not going to want to let me take those out in this weather. So in the spring, early summer, when the weather's decent, I'm going to pop down to Cornwall and we're going to ride my dream motorcycles. Ah, oh, four pot, two strokes. I've never ridden one. It's my dream bike. I'm probably going to hate it. <laughs> but I want to try one. So massive, massive thanks to the, sorry, I can't remember your name, the chap who contacted me about those. Really appreciated, cannot wait. Also lots of other bikes, you know, 954s. There's a chat with a nice, clean 954 Fireblade I'm going to ride. Um, TZR 250s, you know, loads of bikes. A massive response from people on this. So uh, that's all going to come when the weather warms up. So I'm not taking people's bikes out in the crap weather. So that will all kick off officially um, probably May. So I think what we're going to have to do is probably do a little bit of a build series on this bike, just investigating you know, why the front's juddering a little bit. Um, perhaps give it a full oil change anyway, because I'm not sure exactly when the oil was last dropped on it. So we'll do a service, perhaps take it apart a little bit, you know, so I want to do a few jobs to it. I'm going to definitely fit that link pipe and power commander now just to wake up a little bit more of that mid-range, perhaps chain the sprockets and drop a two foot at the front. So there's gonna be a little bit of a build series on this. I don't know when that will start. The carriage is rather busy at the moment, but if I wanna get this on track, I've got these, I've got these jobs sorted. So I'm gonna to have to crack on with it, aren't I? So uh, join me for that. So if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. And you know, I'm doing all sorts of stuff on this channel and there's gonna be older bikes now as well. So it's everything motorcycle. But uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks very much.